Biff Ribbon, an early rhythm game that was unique for its visuals and soundtrack, and innovative for its ability to construct levels on the fly with any music CD the player inserted into the console. Unfortunately, the game would not become as popular as Nana Ancha's other rhythm game, Rapper the Rapper, or its competitors such as Dance Dance Revolution, who would only receive two Japan exclusive spin offs on the PS2 and then fall into obscurity for the next couple of years. However, around 2014, the game developed a loyal fan base that would continue to grow over the years. And over those years, discoveries were made, rumors spread, and questions were asked. Many of these things were put into an iceberg image, uploaded in 2020 by Reddit user Eric3003lel. Now, I bet a majority of you understand the gist of an iceberg video. Read the sentence from the list, then explain the context, yada yada yada. You know how these videos go. Just note that a few suggestions on the list are jokes meant to make the iceberg seem spookier, and that the iceberg doesn't mention every single piece of known Viv Ribbon related media, such as the art book, but this video is long enough. PlayStation Magazine Demo Disc When issue 61 of the official UK PlayStation Magazine was released, it came with a disc that features five playable demos, including one for Viv Ribbon. The demo only contains the tutorial and one playable song, that being Sunny Days. Upon completion, a cutscene will play where Viv Ribbon says, That's all for now, and advertises the full game. The game then autoplays a snippet of the roll along stage, then kicks the player out back into the demo screen. American Release Ribbon was never actually released in North America for the PlayStation 1. It was considered too difficult to market the game towards Western audiences, possibly due to its graphics and art style. In 2014, the game was released for the PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PSP, after Sean Layden and Andrew House got fan outcry and backlash when they showed off a bunch of images of Viv Ribbon at E3 2014, but not as an announcement to re-release it, and more of a just a shout out. I've personally known him for more than 20 years, and when I think of the game behind me, I can't help but think of him. He was most recently the COO of Sony Network Entertainment. A little earlier, I was delighted to hear Andy give a shout out to one of the most iconic games of our time, Vib Ribbon. Yeah, give it up for Vib Ribbon. Lost Merchandise. This is a bit of a joke submission. I'm not even sure how you can consider merchandise lost unless it was never released or no actual photos can be found. There's just one show I can't really find much info about, nor can I really confirm if it's official, but that's all I have for this segment. European Press Kit Around August 2000, a Vib Ribbon press kit was given out to video game journalists and reviewers. It came with three discs. The full power release of the game, which is nearly identical to the final build, the DJ Cam Loa project meets Viv Ribbon Disc, which includes four snippets of songs created by DJ Cam that was released on a different album. The title track is the only unique song on the disc. These songs were actually featured in an alternative demo in the Registered Users Demo 08, where the official Viv Ribbon tracks were replaced with these DJ Cam tracks. I like this new generation of music. <laughs> Finally, the last disc, Press Information August 2000 disc, includes short interviews, art, banners, and screenshots of Viv Ribbon and the Work in Progress PAL CD case, as well as other miscellaneous info. The discs were thankfully dumped online and can be found in the description below for download. Lost Hawaiian Shirts With the UK Viv Ribbon website launch, it promoted a competition for a chance to win 1 out of 10 Viv Ribbon themed Hawaiian shirts. One of the more recent owners of the shirt, which did provide screenshots, say they got this shirt from a special edition released in 1999, which most likely means they actually got it from Japan. The shirt can also be seen in the PlayStation ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, where Sean Lennon was hyping up the digital re-release. Original Ribbon Concept the original concept of Viv Ribbon was actually going to be a game advertising Mercedes-Benz A-Class cars. 
Only one screenshot of this prototype exists. The art style of the prototype wasn't wireframed, using traditional polygons, and featured a living car with headlights for its eyes, bumping along a road according to the audio. The game, however, would be cancelled after bad press about the car's sustainability and gets harsh weather conditions. The game would then be reworked into the game we all know and love. Ridge Racer! Babe in! I, I wanna buy this! You fucking- <laughs> More unreleased songs. Rainbow is the only unreleased Vibrin song that we know of, and only because it was officially released in a Vibrin vinyl. It's unknown why it was cut from the game. While it's possible that there could be more unreleased songs or demo tracks for Vibrin or its spin-offs, there's no real evidence to suggest that any additional cut songs exist or are likely to be released to the public. Vibri Running Assistant A pen was filed in 2001 that showcased an early mobile game that featured Vibri. The game concept shows two game modes, one of them following the more traditional Vibri gameplay, while the other mode involves staying on a rotating and spinning platform. There doesn't seem to be any evidence that the game actually went into production, however. Snake slash Insect Some people have mistaken that Vibri's final form is a snake and not a worm. Despite this, the files of the game that refer to Vibri's worm form is actually named Snake. Maybe her worm form was actually originally supposed to be called a snake, or the name of the animal was changed in the power release. Mojib Online Servers Mojib Ribbon was compatible with the PlayStation 2's online network adapter. Judging by the trailer, you were able to share and upload custom levels with other players. However, according to PlayStation 2.online consoles, the servers only lasted for a little over a year until shutting down on January 31st, 2005. Unplayable Songs The only unplayable songs built in the disc are Viv Ribbon Blues, the tutorial song, the tile screen theme, the menu theme, and the high score song. These can easily be played if you just extract them and burn them into a custom CD and then play them off of that. Unplayable custom songs on the other hand are more likely how the CD or songs were formatted, rather than special code in the game refusing to play specific songs. There are rare moments where the game doesn't really know what to do with a perfectly fine formatted song, and just derps out. When Masai Mashura was interviewed by RetroGamer, he commented, I remember playing Vid Ribbon with a Brian Eno CD. No pieces came out. Christmas Disc Around the same time as Vibram was being released in Japan, Tsutea, a Japanese video and bookstore rental shop, released a mini CD that promoted Vibram and Symphonic Orgel OPUS series of albums. The disc contains only one song, which is a musical chime rendition of O oh Christmas Tree. The song does not feature any vocals. For 21 years, the disc was considered lost media as the contents of the disc weren't available online. Finally, on May 23rd, 2021, the disc was listed on a Japanese Yahoo auction and Twitter user at StellarWind would win the auction and upload the contents of the disc to the net on June 12th. NTT Voice Synthesizer it has been confirmed that Vibri's voice was achieved using the NTT voice synthesizer program, but unfortunately, no one has yet to find a working copy of the program. Ripple Mobile Game A port of Viv Ripple was released on May 20th, 2004. As a part of a promotional campaign held by Dwango Corporation for the PlayStation 2 game, it was made in Flash and it was very simplified, featuring unpixelated, vector versions of the PETA characters, and Vibri being in black lines as opposed to white with a pink glow. It is unknown if there are any enemies or time limit, as there is no video footage or current download links known to exist. It's a limited release to only one website that can only be accessed by mobile phones in Japan, means it's very unlikely we may ever see this game resurface. Vibri is a triangle. Some failed attempts at extracting or loading Vibri's smile via a third-party program has resulted in Vibri looking like a series of, or just one triangle. 50,388 it was rumored that 50,387 was the max possible score you could reach in Viv Ribbon, meaning that 50,388 would be impossible. However, this isn't actually true. At 116,279 points is when the game stops counting points for the score and gets stuck. The actual hex value still increases, which is what the bonus score uses to determine itself. The max value that the score can actually go is 21,591,115. Adding even one additional point will cause the value to overflow, and the score will be set to a negative value. Ribbon Multiplayer This is a joke entry, as there is no evidence to suggest that Vibram was going to or planned to have multiplayer, and obviously there's no actual multiplayer in the final release field of the game. Nana Ancha's curse killed the next Vibram game. 
After Tamagotchi Collection, Nana Ansha hasn't been able to create a successful or memorable video game. They either produce budget or shovelware licensed games, and anything the original they created just wasn't successful enough. A lack of funding and success, plus having to talk to Sony about creating another Vivri game, which Sony does own the rights to, are the most likely reasons why there hasn't been another Vivri game since 2004. Vibrian on MTV. Music, which is now known as Music on TV, was a Japanese TV channel that played music videos and other music related topics, sort of similar to MTV. In December 1999, Music hosted an event called the Music Countdown 20. This event introduced Music's top 100 songs of the year. For the first 80 ranks, each entry would actually be read out by Vibri. There's only one screenshot of this event that has resurfaced on the internet. Despite what the iceberg says, there's no actual evidence that Vivri appeared on MTV. Maybe with the exception of a TV ad. Riven's models are unobtainable. For the longest time, many have attempted to extract Vibri's model from Vib Ribbon. Despite the different programs and methods used, none of them were successful, either getting nothing or a jumbled mess. Until recently, however, Twitter user Mobo is Happy was able to successfully extract her model and put her into Blender. The link for the Blender rig download is available in the description below. I also have my own video that showcases how you yourself can extract the model. December 9, 1999. This is Vibrib's Japan release date. Why is it so deep in the iceberg? This is because Vibrib's release date on sub websites, even including Wikipedia, say December 12th instead. There isn't really any evidence supporting the legitimacy of the 12th date. Most people in the Vibrivir community support the idea that the game was actually released on the 9th, due to there being official merch matching the said date on the game's release. Also, the United States Copyright Catalog mentions that the game was released on the 9th of December. Laugh at Beats Laugh at Beats appears to be a mistranslation of the band and the Vibrivir song Laugh in Peace. Earlier mentions of this band and the song in English publications most commonly listed them as Beats including the UK press kit. Playstation Magazine couldn't even get her gender right. But more recent mentions do correctly mention them as peace. Platinum course. There's no actual platinum course in Vib Ribbon. It is possible that it was planned though, as Rainbow was a cut song. Interactive tutorial. Despite how Vib Ribbon presents its how to play, it's not actually interactive. Pressing the X or start button will cause the game to return to the main menu. It's very likely that many players accidentally thought the tutorial was actually interactive, and pressed the X button to roll over spikes, only to then quit out of the tutorial and be very confused. This did happen to me when I was playing the game for the first time. Installed in RAM, Vivirin is actually a small game, so small that it installs itself into PlayStation's 2 megabytes of RAM. Of course, that's not including the intro of the tutorial or its soundtrack, just the core gameplay. This is actually how the game is still able to be played while swapping CDs of a custom music disc, as all of its data is stored in the console, including the code for creating levels for the player's CDs. Beta Audio Sound Files There are three audio files in Vibrivin that are unused in the game. It's unknown what they are used for, most likely old versions of selection or button feedback sound effects. Real meaning of Trip Out Trip Out, also known as Overflowing Emotions, is the first song in the gold course of Vib Ribbon. Reading the lyrics of the song, it appears to be about how chaotic babies can be. Being calm and quiet at first, but then suddenly being hyper and loud. Other aspects of the lyrics, however, are confusing and unclear. There could be many interpretations of what these lyrics mean. Is the mother annoyed at her child? What is coming true? And is she even the mother? Ribbon for the PS2. Other than backwards compatibility into two spin-off games, there was never a Vib Ribbon sequel or game for the PlayStation 2. The first fan art. But we can't really say what the real first fan art of Vibri was. We do have some very early pieces of fan art that were uploaded on the internet around 2000. They are pretty interesting. Rap Rapid was a sequel. Project Rap Rapid was going to be a Kickstarter crowdfunded rhythm game by Nana Ansha and. Oh, he's supposed to pronounce what? Innisu. But, but, but what is 
absolute. Unfortunately, the game didn't receive enough funding in time. And while the Kickstarter does say work on Project Rat Private cannot continue at this time, it's most likely that the game is cancelled. However, the main character is a rabbit, and it's a rhythm game, and it was made by the same people who made Ribbon and Ripple, so was it a sequel? No. Vibri representing human evolution. Human evolution is the scientific theory that humans evolved from previous ape-like animals. Vibri could be a symbol of human evolution, as she does have the ability to change into different animals depending on how well she is doing. Sure enough, as a worm, Vibri gets bigger and is more capable of doing tasks than her previous incarnation, all the way until she becomes Queen Vibri. Similar to images that present the human evolution theory. However, exactly what animal is Queen Vibri? If you look between a rabbit form and her queen form, it just appears to be Vibri's rabbit form, but with a crown and wings. But in Queen Vibri form, she loses her ears. Does this mean Vibri turns into a human while in Queen Vibri form? Or as some sort of an angel? The end of the ribbon. Some fans of the game refer to the floor that Vibri walks on as the ribbon. But is there an actual end to the ribbon? How far does Vibri have to go to get to the end? Is there even an end? And if there was, what's at the end? Is it nothing? A big pit? Or is it some kind of location Vibri's trying to go to? Is there food? Is there water? Some kind of special equipment or weaponry? A person? No one knows. Complete isolation. The only other characters in Vibri's universe are the Bucci enemies and the PETA characters. There's a possibility that the art book could be canon, but on Nana Anshu's website, it mentions that the reader is exploring inside Vibri's head, so all these characters could be made up. As far as the video games, Vibri doesn't have any friends, family, or strangers that appear on the screen. There aren't even any other living beings shown within Viv Ribbon. She is in complete isolation in the Ribbon universe, and she has no one to talk to. Except you, the player. You're the only person that Vibri actually talks to. Vibri doesn't equal Vibri. Vibri's Japanese name is actually Vibri. This is due to the Japanese alphabet not really containing any V sounds. The name change in Europe was most likely because they wanted to give Vibri a more natural sounding name. Unedited songs. I don't really have anything for this one. It's possible that they could exist on the developer's hard drive, but we really don't have any information about this. Vibri's height. 